Over the past 15 years, I have fought many battles in repair work. Most of those battles have been with myself. That's just the God's honest truth. There's been some battles with Samantha, and I don't see those battles as winning. I see those battles as both of us being a work in progress, wrestling with heavy, heavy issues that we have had to redefine what winning is. Winning is really understanding each other, extending grace to each other, and learning how to really live with each other's dysfunction and live with each other's wounds and really care for each other as we're both a work in progress, both doing work to heal. I have had some battles that I've really wrestled with. I feel like I've won some significant battles since we launched out 15 years ago, and I'm still wrestling with some battles. And I mean, listen, <laughs> these videos that we do, uh, many of you have gotten to know me over several years. And I mean, they're very personal in nature. I'm still wrestling the battle of childhood trauma. I'm still wrestling the battle of midlife and having your kids move out and having only one kid at home and what that looks like and feels like. And it's redefining Samantha and I's relationship. And there's been some battles in work life that I'm still wrestling with, as is Samantha. So there's no perfection here. There's no illusion of perfection here. I'm still a work in progress. And I truly hope and pray that these videos continue to encourage you. But I will tell you that we all have wars that we're fighting. And I want to reach into your life right now and ask you, what is your war that you're fighting? If you can't identify it right now, then I really want to kind of prick at your discernment and ask you to start to identify what is it that you're fighting? What is that battle that you're wrestling with? Because I assure you it's there. I bet if you wanted to really get vulnerable and humble with your spouse, you could ask them and they could probably give you two or three battles that they see, right? And they may miss it or they may be spot on. Whatever it looks like, whatever you call it, I know it's a fight that you're in the middle of. And as Mike Tyson said, everybody has a plan until they get punched in the mouth. And so we can kind of plan and we can strategize, but then there's this fight that comes our way. And I know that you, if you're watching these videos, are in the middle of a fight. I'm sure you're wrestling with something. I want to encourage you today to identify what that is. And in just a couple of minutes, I'll give you some pointers. The truth is, you should be fighting something right now. If you're not, I kind of wonder, hmm, how in touch with recovery work are you right now? How in touch are you with repair work? And maybe how in touch with your spouse or partner are you? Because if they're fighting some battles, it's probably creating some inner turmoil or creating some fight inside of you that you're wrestling with. For example, your spouse may be dealing with great shame and guilt, and they're making some conversations about them, they're making recovery work about them, so that may trigger inside of you a fight to maybe want to lash out, to try and control them, to try and manage their recovery, and that's a fight. It's a fight to not manage their recovery. It's a fight to not control everything that they do. It's a fight to try and not check their phone every day and constantly wonder where they're at and call them three, five, ten times a day at work or text them or what have you. It's a fight to try and not take the reins of repair work and always be leading them. It's a fight to not get angry and bitter at them for not leading repair work. Now, if you're an unfaithful, your betrayed may still be dealing with anger, rage, doubting your efforts, and that creates a fight inside of you to not get full of shame, to not lash out and respond with anger and bitterness. It creates a fight inside of you to not just go crawl, crawl in a cave and hide and say it's not worth it, ah, forget it. He or she's never gonna be happy. See, there's a fight that you're wrestling with, and it's normal. At the end of this video, if you're in a good enough place with your spouse, you may try this exercise. Watch the video or send it to them 
and at the end say, you know, so what do you feel like your fight is? Now, you may be tempted, unfaithful or betrayed, to say, look, I don't have any fights. I'm doing good. Things are going well because you're trying to make your spouse feel secure when in fact that approach makes them feel less secure because it speaks to the, to the fact that you're not really in touch with what's going on and that you're maybe aloof or you're lying because you don't want them to know that you are struggling. What I would suggest if you don't know what your fight is, to take some time to contemplate and really understand, man, what is it that I'm wrestling with right now? Because you should be able to go, you know, honey, I'm fighting with shame, or I'm fighting with self-hatred, or I'm fighting with the desire to try and control what you're doing, or I'm fighting with discouragement, I'm fighting with hopelessness. There should be a fight going on of some nature. Now, it may not be a nine out of a 10, it may be a four. That's still a fight and it's okay. So here's a few pointers that are vital in wrestling and fighting with what you're having to deal with right now, wherever you're at in your own repair journey. I guess I could also say, here's some ways to win your fight. Because if you're in this fight, I'm sure you want to win. Number one is there cannot be passivity when it comes to this fight. You really have got to get expert help. You've got to read. You've got to study. You've got to put out the initiative. And you've got to show work ethic if you want your spouse to feel safe. If you want them to see the authentic desire to get healthy and to heal, you cannot be passive about it. I'm sure that you can find books about the subject. I'm sure that you can Google about it. You can read articles. If you're dealing with infidelity related stuff, man, go to affairrecovery.com. Use the search engine for our free resources or become a member. And I'm sure that you're going to find more than enough info on that subject. Number two, and possibly the hardest, believe it or not, is to invite your spouse or your partner into your fight. Collaborate together. Maybe you need to have a discussion that says, well, honey, what do you think my fight is? Or where do you think I'm losing? And where do you think I'm winning? That would be a very helpful, safe exercise to do for both of you. But ask them to join with you. If you come from faith, you can say, look, I really want to ask you to pray for me because I'm trying to get a handle on this. If you don't come from faith, you can simply say, look, I'm really wrestling with this and I want to do this together. I don't want to be in my world and you in your world. I want to do this together. I'm not asking you to do the work for me. I'm asking you to support me, maybe to keep you accountable, but to do it collaboratively, not in this disconnected world where you both feel like you're spiraling. There's no connection. There's no oneness. Next, not the toughest, but one of the most important is to extend mercy to both yourself and to your spouse. It's absolutely vital that you're kind to yourself, and I'm working on a video just for that, but also kind to your spouse. And I think that comes from giving yourself and your spouse permission to be a work in progress. Look, we're all in progress. We're all working, managing, trying to get healthy and be the best us that we can be, but you are a work in progress. You have not arrived yet. If you really talk to some of these high level people who are influencers, who are trainers and coaches, who work with people and charge absurd amounts of money to be able to be their coach, look, they will also admit to the fact, at least most of them will admit that they are also a work in progress. It's okay to be in progress. It really is. The goal is progress, not perfection. Next is having a proper timeline. You've probably heard me or Rick or someone else at affairrecovery.com or on these videos talk about, you know, typically it takes 12 to as much as 24 months to heal from the effects of infidelity. It certainly can take longer and for many people it does and that's okay. But you do have to understand a proper timeline to deal with whatever fight you're working on. If you think that you're just going to wake up one day and your shame's going to be gone and that you're not going to have to wrestle with it, it's unrealistic. This isn't a two week or what have you thing. I mean, this is going to take months of recovery work. It's going to take you aggressively reading and studying and implementing the things that you're using. It's also going to take some professional care to really support you 
and help you see what you cannot see yourself. I've been in many fights in my life. Growing up in the inner city, there was a lot of fights. College and professional sports and high school sports gotten a lot of fights. I've won a few. I lost a lot. I know what it's like to be punched in the mouth. And I know if you're watching these types of videos, you know what it's like to be punched in the mouth. I promise you, with the right help, you can punch back, not your spouse. You can punch shame back. You can punch self-hatred and suicide and confusion and hopelessness. You can punch relapse back. I want you to punch back today. I want you to win your fight. I want you to come out on the other side healthy and strong because you didn't retreat from this fight. You stepped up. You engaged in the battle and gave yourself permission to be a work in progress.